Welcome to this month's episode of The Signature Show. I'm Julia Souza, Signature's Development Manager. To kick off this month's episode, we're doing something a little crazy with the Color Purple's Tobias Young. Besides being a wonderful actor and singer, Tobias is a social media influencer with a huge following on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. You can follow Simply Food by TY for delicious recipes and Tobias's unique sense of humor. And today, Tobias has invited Color Purple cast members Keena McCarter and Jaleesa Williams to participate in the Hot Ones Challenge. Hot Ones is one of the most watched internet talk shows today where celebrities sit down and eat hot wings doused in extremely hot hot sauce. This episode, Tobias is approaching the challenge with his own signature spin. Take it away, Tobias. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy Tobias Young here, and I am here at Signature Theater where we are currently in production of The Color Purple that is running through October the 9th. I have two of my castmates here that were insane enough to agree to do this Hot Ones Challenge with me where we have hot sauces that range from a Scoville unit of 1,000 to 2 million. But before we get too far into it, I'm gonna let them introduce themselves, and then we're gonna head into the video proper. Hey, hey, y'all. I'm Jaleesa. And I am Keenan. Okay, so I don't know about y'all, but I am extremely nervous uh, because again, like I said, these hot sauces range from 1,000 on the Scoville unit to 2 million. But what my lovely friends here didn't know is that they have no control or any idea of what sauces they're going to be having because they're about to pick them at random right now. All right, so I'm gonna have you pick two out and don't look at them yet. Just pick out two, don't be cheating. Uh-huh, uh-huh, you pick out two. And we're gonna be doing three wings, okay? So two of them are gonna be at random, and then the last one, we're gonna do the last dab because it wouldn't be the challenge if we didn't put ourselves through a little bit of pain. All right, so we're gonna get our wings nice and sauced up, and then when we come back, we will reveal what sauces we had. All right, y'all, so we are back. We have all of our wings sauced up. So we're gonna talk about what wings we have first, and then we're just gonna try them and pray that we can make it through this without passing out. So let us know what you got first, what you rocking with. Okay, my first one is the classic. Okay, and I'm gonna be starting off with the Las Caliente. And I'm gonna start with the collards and goats. Okay, let's, let's go in, let's go in, let's see all what right, happens. Um. Mm. Uh oh. Mm -mm. Already? Mm hmm. I wasn't expecting this one to be that spicy. That's the tear thing? <laughs> <laughs> you scared me, Tobias. On a scale of one to 10, what do you rate it? One. Okay, one. Show <laughs> off. For me, this is like a four or five. Two. Okay, two. All right, well, let's push on through to number two. What you rocking with for number two? Number two, I have the bomb. And for number two, I have Tear Things Curse Hot Sauce. And what about you? I have the Island Wings. Oh God, fingers crossed. What were you saying, Jaleesa? Stop. Really? Mm -mm. That is disgusting and it's really hot. What do you rate that one? 10. <sighs> Help me, Jesus. It's Can not, I pick up my nap? Um, that is an eight. And that terrifies me because that is two million on the Scoville. So I am very concerned. Keenan. Mine was like a one. <laughs> it was just out, it would just taste like. I'm but sick of you. All right, <clears throat> well. I need milk. Oh gosh, she's dying. Okay, the first milk. One, the first one had some um, backlash. Okay, now, <clears throat> because this is the Hot Ones Challenge, it would be insane if we did not finish this off with <clears throat> the Apollo, the last dab. We've been to only do a little dab of this because this might send us to the ER and we have a show to do tonight, which I hope you guys are gonna come and see us in. All right, I'm gonna go in with just a little tiny dab. I'm not gonna do too much. Uh, dab, that's it for me. All right, you go ahead. You on your own with that one. We're all gonna do this one together. Okay, all right. She said a uh, dab for real, for real. I'm still burning I'm gonna put it one. on the side. And don't be cheap. 
do it. Just do one more for good measure. Right, because you're in Of no course, handle. you want me to do one more for good measure. All right, measure. here we go. Cheers, Cheers. man. Okay. Wish us luck, y'all. Oh, my God. It's not even good. I don't taste like, anything. Like, tasty. That's what they want you to do. They want you to get some more. Are you more. sure you can taste? I think we should give it a little second. Give it a second. <laughs> I can't feel my tongue. I don't know if I'm still burning from the last one. Oh, what? Oh, what? It's hot. You can taste it? Yes, I can taste it. Oh, what? <laughs> Did you get some? It's got more flavor to it. It does. Um, thank y'all so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you guys continue to support the arts yes. and all of your fellow artists around town. And until next time, you guys take care. Bye. Bye. Y'all might want to keep rolling, cause. <laughs> <laughs> How much did you just put on there? Ah! See, I it's told you. It's starting to creep up a little. I told you it was too hot. Hi, I'm Sarah Hoffman, Signature's Deputy Director of Marketing for Digital Media. This month in the ARC, we continue performances of No Place to Go, starring Bobby Smith. Prior to Signature's production, No Place to Go had never been performed by anyone other than the show's creator, Ethan Lipton. We caught up with Ethan this month to find out more about his inspiration for this one-of-a-kind musical. Yeah, I, I had had this band, uh, and they uh, co-wrote the music for this with me. And I was also a playwright, and I always kept those two things separate. And then um, a woman named Shanta Thake, who was the director, who was the director then of Joe's Pub, commissioned me to write a piece, and I was in the process of losing a job that had sustained me for a long time in New York. And I was like, oh, I, I can write about this. The first thing many of us do after checking it over with our families is come up with a number, a dollar value that would make it worth our while to uproot ourselves and move with the company to Mars. That's where the company's moving to, the planet Mars. I guess the real estate's like a penny a hectare. I don't know. <laughs> I think I've always been interested actually in the really small and in the mundane parts of life. I started to realize that a very big idea or a kind of arch or even ridiculous idea provided a good framework for me to explore the everyday things. And so the idea of a character whose job was being outsourced to Mars came really because that's how it felt. It felt like the company was moving to Mars. And Mars seemed like a more interesting, but also kind of more universal idea for audiences. And, and to imagine that I was explaining it to people who didn't know what I was talking about. Mars sort of invites you to feel like you're explaining it to aliens. Parts of the show resound at different times, you know, and things, the world changes and, and some of them seem less urgent. But one thing that has been sort of continuous is other people finding themselves in that experience. But I do think the fact that, that everybody has gone through this experience of having their job in some way radically transformed, at least for a time, that people will be able to kind of connect with it in a, a deep way, uh, I hope. Uh, and see some version of themselves or someone they love. The deal we were offered is a better deal than many people in this country or most people in the world are getting today. That's what the man who decided to move the company to Mars is telling himself tonight as he climbs into bed. And he's right. He's right. He's just doing his job. He's held accountable to his bosses and to their bosses and ultimately to the shareholders. We are all now on this planet accountable to the shareholders. That's the system. We created it. It's spread all over the world. It's just business. It isn't personal. And it has nothing to do with people.
it feels like it's its own child now, and um, to, to be able to kind of watch Bobby um, really author the non-me performance of it, um, and to, to reveal things that he finds true in it, and to explore it has been very gratifying. I got a place to go, even if I'm tired or feeling blue, they let me stay, collect my pay because I'm one of them. Oh, oh it ain't the glamorous life of a pirate, yeah I know, but at least I got a place to go. Hi, I'm Signature's company manager, Laura Mady. In just two weeks, we close the run of our critically acclaimed production of The Color Purple. And a little known fact about The Color Purple is that the music and lyrics are written by three of pop music's most influential writers, Brenda Russell, Ali Willis, and Stephen Bray. Some of their individual hit songs include Earth, Wind & Fire's September, Madonna's Into the Groove, and the Friends theme song. So we thought it'd be fun to dig through their catalogs and feature one of their hits. To end this month's episode of The Signature Show, we asked The Color Purple's Kayla Gross and guitarist Deontay Haggerty Willis to put their unique spin on the Allie Willis song made famous by Earth, Wind & Fire, Boogie Wonderland. so slowly into heart of men who need more than they get daylight deals a bad hand to a woman who has laid too many beds the me first is you in the face it says baby ah uh, ah uh, it don't work And shake the hurt Dance Boogie Wonderland oh, 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 oh. Dance Boogie Wonderland Sounds fly through the night I chase my final to boogie 